Greetings, what's going on everyone? Yashua here. I am in Arizona right now, camping, uh, doing some dispersed camping, which I've just grown to love in the last couple years. The fact that you can just go anywhere and set up for free and live uh, in nature is a freaking amazing miracle. Life is a miracle, by the way. Um, but I wanted to talk to you today about another miracle that happened to me. Um, and I use the, the word miracle, I'd say lightly, because there's a lot of religious connotation that's of course not what I'm speaking about. Uh, but just the to me, miracle is like miraculous, like the miraculous, the miraculousness, <laughs> the miraculousness of life. Miraculousness, that's a funny word to say. Uh, but it, it kind of dates back to early days for me. And um, I did a video about this a long time ago. And interestingly enough, um, I wasn't able to monetize it um, on YouTube. This is years ago. And I remember I put it, it was about like curing ADHD and YouTube took it down. Um, well, they didn't take it down, they took off the monetization. They said that it competes with their other ads and it's whatever. Um, so I'm not even gonna monetize this video. And I don't really care about that. Um, what matters to me is getting this information out there because I'm realizing more and more if there's any reason that I'm here, it's just to help spread some joy. And also not just like, just live in this fantasy world of everything's great and perfect and just be positive, but like, what does it actually take to get to a state of joy? That's what being in joy, you enjoy life, being in a state of joy. It takes a lot to get there because it takes a lot of clearing out the fear and coming into alignment with self. So that being said, here we go. Um, so when I was nine years old, I was diagnosed with ADD and later diagnosis of ADHD. But first, I think ADHD wasn't as popular, and first is ADD, attention deficit disorder, which basically meant that I had a uh, attention issue. I, I had trouble focusing, I couldn't sit still. That's where a lot of the hyperactive, so the, the H is hyperactive. Couldn't sit still, couldn't focus, um, and just was like all over the place. And it's not to say that it was wrong. Um, I think when you put people in a box, when society tries to label people as something, uh, it's within the context of that box, yes, there's diagnoses and all these things. Same with like being insane and, and all this stuff. Within the context of normal human society, people are crazy and people are weird and people are wild and people have attention problems and people are, you know, this and that. And there's all these labels. So I didn't know about this, of course, when I was nine years old. So I just did what I was told and I took medication. I wasn't gonna fight my parents. Um, so at the age of nine, I started taking Ritalin. And uh, without getting too scientific-y, um, you know, from what I started to learn about Ritalin, it, it was kind of like putting people on speed, um, amphetamines, and it basically when, people that are hyperactive go on speed, I guess it's supposed to calm them down. Whereas people that aren't, it does the reverse. Um, so what it did to me was it basically shut me down and it took me from this really like high energy kid. And I don't think I was, I wasn't like a terror. I think I had a lot of energy and also a lot of like love and life. And when I watch back on videos, like I am kind of wild and out there, but not like in a mean, scary way, just like in a very like, so excited, want to explore things, want to move, want to like, t even while I'm talking this video, I'm like taking things and kind of moving them around. Um, so there's still little hints of it in there, but uh, this is also this video is really about how I overcame that and overcame the label and completely shifted. So um, let me just say, if you're watching this video, um, I don't consider myself having ADHD anymore. I've I've dissolved the label. Um, it doesn't mean if somebody put me in a room, they might not mark off some checkpoints, some doctor in a, a suit or whatever. <laughs> However, I don't identify with that label anymore. And I've also changed so many of the behaviors that were not suiting me. And I channeled the ones that were suiting me into a way that actually allowed me to be much more powerful in this life and do much better um, in terms of like being in alignment and feeling happier and making sense of myself. So if you're watching this video and you have some sort of attention deficit thing going down, um, I just want you to know that I was like the most like wild kid. My body used to go like like I used to literally be like this, like I would, I mean, you can probably still see some little twitches in me that I've still have little pieces of, but I used to be like this all day, just like, like my body just wouldn't stop moving. I couldn't sit still. I couldn't meditate for like a second. The idea of meditation was ridiculous. Um, I didn't even understand the concept. So like, what do you mean? But I love dancing. I was very active and I, I played a lot of sports and I liked being outside. Um, I just didn't understand the whole connection to it. So nine years old, take uh, Ritalin. Um, later on in high school, I was kind of like on it for a few years and then off it for a bit. In high school, I started taking it full time. Every morning I would take a 20 milligram pill and that was all I needed. And, and at that point I had ADHD and I was also in support classes. So I was told that I was not smart. And I talk about this more in my book, Conversations With Your Best Friend, link below, you can check it out and, and get more into detail about all this stuff and how I overcame all these things. 
Yeah, you know, so I was was in school and I would wake up in the morning, I would take 20 milligrams and basically what Adderall did for me was it completely put me in this zone. It was like tunnel vision where I, I felt like robotic, like must go to class, must study, must not speak to friends, can't eat because food tastes like crap. Like literally that was me. I didn't eat food. And you can imagine me who loves food. I, I remember my mom would pack me a sandwich, an apple and a bottle of water every single day. I would give the sandwich away to a friend. I would take, and the bottle of water was this little tiny one. So I would take one tiny sip. I would take a bite of the apple, and that was it. Nothing tasted good. Nothing. No, the food was not exciting or sexy or interesting to me. And I just didn't. I wasn't hungry. I didn't want to eat. It destroyed my appetite, and it made me this sort of robotic person who didn't want to talk to people in class. Um, I got straight A's in the classes I was good, like in math and science, A's, A pluses, straight through. I still struggle with reading, which is interesting, but it was more of an emotional block that I later came to understand. Reading and writing were not easy for me, but I did okay. Um, I was in support classes, so basically I, instead of having free period in high school, I was in a class called support where all the kids that struggled with learning disabilities and things like that would go, and we had teachers who like tried to help us out. Um, but I was doing really well in the classes that I was good at and interested in. Um, so it was kind of this odd thing because I, I would take the medication and I would just like be in the zone. I didn't want to talk to anybody. And then the last period it would start to wear off and then I would start to come back alive. And I remember like I had this one teacher, uh, and, <laughs> uh, it's funny. It was this, it was this, uh, like AP psych class I was taking and I was like the bad, I was the troublemaker because I, I was very chameleon esque growing up. I could be like depending on the situation if I was in a class and there was like a bad a bad student you know if there was a kid who was like the bad kid uh, or the class clown I would just sit back and be very calm if there was no class clown I would turn into the class clown I would be funny I just wanted to make people laugh and have a good time so I remember when my medication would wear off in this one class I would be like really hyperactive and really wild and then uh, as, as the class went on I just thought it was funny because I could imagine her talking to the other teachers like you know in the conference room and talking about oh Josh, he's such a good boy. And she'd be like, are you kidding me? He's like a little crazy person. Uh, so I just thought it was funny. Anyhow, um, so what happened was I went to college and I started a band. And I always loved music, but I was not, I didn't consider myself a musician, but I loved dancing. I couldn't sing. And then when I got into guitar in high school, it started to change something in me. But in high school, um, it was still just kind of this pipe dream. Same with cooking. They were like, yeah, I love them, but I'm not gonna make money off them. I'm not gonna like pursue them. That's ridiculous. I don't have the skill. I don't have the ability. I'm just this kind of like learning disabled kid. And that was the thing. I had this label. I And because I had the label, I thought I wasn't smart enough. I thought people, um, you know, looked down on me. I thought that I just didn't fit in and I had all these problems that were created because of this label. Um, so college, I started a band with a friend named Tim and he's like one of the most talented musicians I had ever met. Incredible voice. He could. He was writing a rock opera in, in freaking freshman year of college and could play every instrument and sing every harmony and, and all I could do was just like jam out to fish on guitar. Um, but I heard this song he wrote and I said, oh my God, this is amazing. We're starting a band. And it's just like just instantly I went from no passion to just full on and just full on like fully shameless into this whole thing I want to start a band and, and just do everything so being a musician kind of changed my whole life and my whole perspective and I remember junior year um, Tim had written this song um, one day I was asking him about it and the chorus was we'll shut you down like a bottle of drugs in the morning We'll shut you, we'll shut you down like a bottle of drugs in the morning. Shut you down like a bottle of drugs in the morning. And I was like, what is that about? Because he had asked me during the, when he was writing the song for the course, he's like, can I use your pill bottle as a shaker? Because in college I was still taking medication, but I wasn't taking it every day. But what would happen is I'd have to study for a test, I would take a pill, and I would stay up all night because I didn't go to class much. And I would teach myself the entire semester in like a course of a few hours. And my brain could do that. I literally remember in math, like I wouldn't go to class at all, wouldn't study, wouldn't look at this stuff once. Day before a test, open the book, take Adderall, and I'm not using this as like Adderall is good. Please do not, <laughs> do not take it that way. But I would take Adderall and I would basically ace the test the next day just by teaching myself staying up all night. Um, because when things clicked in my brain, they clicked. So um, I asked him what the chorus, Shut You Down Like a Bottle of Drugs in the Morning, was about. And he said, if you really want to know, 
It's about you because when you take this medication, it just shuts you down. It turns you into this different person. And I also knew like I get very irritated very quickly. I didn't want to really socialize with people. I would get frustrated and I just became a whole different being. And suddenly something clicked and I said, wow, I need to stop this. And what happened was I realized that here I was completely immersed in music. We were practicing eight, 10 more hours a day, just completely immersed in this without Adderall. I was just fully in music and, and nothing else mattered. I wasn't looking at phones or computers and social media wasn't a thing back then. So of course that helped a lot too. But I was just so immersed in music and so just in love and inspired by it that I was like, wow, maybe it's not that I have a learning disability. It's just maybe my energy was being channeled in the wrong direction. And when I'm giving myself to something I truly love and truly appreciate, maybe that changes everything. So what I started doing is I started, I basically threw out the pill bottle and I started just focusing on what are the places where I feel really inspired? What are the places where I feel so connected to whatever I'm doing that nothing else seems to matter and that this label of ADHD is just completely gone? And music was pulsing through my body, pulsing through my veins, and all I wanted to do was play it and be so focused. So that was the first step. And then I started getting more into the kind of the spiritual side and I started meditating. And I remember like training myself to sit still was not easy. <laughs> like literally it was so intense that even when I first got it down, my body would just involuntarily like, I would have these like muscle tremors or whatever you call them, just like muscle twitches and spasms because it didn't want to sit still. It was just like, mm -mm. but through practice, through calmness, through breathing, through time, through getting rid of the stories, I started to calm myself down. And suddenly I realized that I don't have this label. ADHD was this made up thing that kept me in this box for a long time. And the reason I really wanted to do this video today is because I just started reading this book called Natural Born Heroes. And it's uh, the second book by Christopher McDougall and he read Born to Run, which was a life-changing book. It, like one of the most inspiring books I've ever read. And I just got this book yesterday and this morning I'm reading it and he talks about people with like hyperactive disorders and how, yeah, in classrooms, um, when we're put in these classrooms and we're meant to sit still and, and, and not everyone learns that way. Not everyone learns by just sitting in a, in a thing and taking notes and whatever. And I could do it enough to get by, but it just wasn't my natural state. And he was saying that a lot of these people with like, that have all this energy and are considered like, whatever, like have some sort of learning deficit, actually you can like channel that into becoming these like amazing humans that have like these natural wildlife skills and because we have this energy that connects us outside. So all these things are starting to click because this is stuff that I knew, but reading it and, and spending so much time being outside now, being in nature and being barefoot, you know, and 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 just being in the ground and, and running on trails. I'm like, wow, all the energy that I had inside that was getting all messed up in school actually makes sense in this completely different, more natural context. I'm starting to see that the strength that I have and the abilities and I don't consider myself some super strong weightlifting person I'm not in in any way but the way I can move my body the way I can channel energy the way I can just connect to nature is something that I think we all have the ability to tap into as so long as we're not staying in this sort of matrix style world and we're actually getting out into the world and seeing what is possible inside of us so if you're watching this and you have some sort of you know learning disability it doesn't have to be ADHD any kind of learning disability or even, you know, I know people with autism, people that are on the spectrum, that like they struggle to fit into the normal world because in the normal world, their brains don't make sense. But when they start actually finding things they're passionate about and channeling the energy in that way, they're some of the most brilliant people that I've ever met in my entire life. Um, so this video is really here to remind you that no matter what situation you're in, no matter what label you have, or you've been told that you're supposed to be that it's not real. And it's just you that let the label be the thing that drives you to get to understand who you are. This has been a huge piece like ADHD started out as this burden started out as this thing where I'm like, I have literally my my uh, attention is disabled attention deficit disorder, I have this disordered disabled attention thing and taking it as this bad thing and channeling that and using that as this whole force to actually show me who I really was. So I find that the labels are beautiful so long as we channel the energy to break them. Because once we break out of them, we realize that anything's possible. If you've been someone that's been born into your life and, and, and told that you're something that you're not, well, or maybe you're born with a, a health issue. Maybe you grew up with you know really bad back pain, but that back pain, you know, even though it was cumbersome and a burden, Maybe it taught you, or maybe it's still teaching you right now, or it could be, if you're watching this video, to actually channel that and say, okay, I have this back pain. I'm gonna get into all these different forms of movement because of that. 
Had I never had the back pain, I may have never discovered this piece of myself. So use it as a blessing. That's why it's a miracle. The fact that I had ADHD, I don't blame anyone. I don't blame the doctors or parents, even though the medication did really mess me up. And I really hope that you don't put your kids or yourself on medication if you're seeing this. And if you have, know that there's a way for them to get off safely and intelligently. And yes, there's big pharma that wants to do X, Y, Z and all this stuff and make money. And I get it. I don't agree with it in any way, but I get it because people are driven by money. However, there is another way. And I always joke with uh, being barefoot is that like I'm a barefoot shoe salesman because there's nothing to sell. <laughs> there's literally no, I, I could say I'm a barefoot shoe salesman because there's nothing to sell. I'm just saying, hey, take your shoes off, put them in the ground, be smart, get to know yourself. And it's the same thing with medication. Like there's no special program or thing that you need to buy to realize that you don't need to be on medication, but just using that. It doesn't mean you have to throw out your pill bottle right away like I did very radically. You know, maybe it's a slower process for you or maybe it is. Maybe you're like, you know, I've had that feeling that something isn't quite right about this. And then you get rid of it. And then you start to realize, okay, there is a struggle and there's going to be a struggle at first if your life is designed because you're taking, like, let's say you're in school you can take medication, you know something's not right, but it helps you study and you stop taking it. Now all of a sudden, yeah, maybe it's going to be harder to study. But over time, when you allow yourself to be who you really are, your life is going to shift and it's going to start showing up very differently. So I'm not saying it's easy, but it's very simple. Tune into yourself. You don't need external things to make you feel something, right? You can actually be in that alignment with yourself when you're actually being in a state of alignment. If you're in an incorrect environment, it's going to show up differently. And in the context of that environment, you might need something. I've been seeing this more recently. The more time I spend out in nature, the harder it is for me just to like walk into like grocery stores and, 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 mar and places that used to be like just more normal. Now I'm like, this is kind of weird. Like this, is, this isn't a natural thing and I'm, I'm awkward and I'm struggling to get by sometimes. I did in the post office recently. I, I, like, I was a mess in the post office. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but something is changing in me. And, and there were other things going on that day, but I'm just seeing the more time I spend in the matrix, the more my body is like, get out. You can't, you can't be here. Um, so I'm still learning and I'm not here to say I'm an expert or I'm telling you what to do, um, but I'm just sharing my experience of life. And if it clicks something, we'll know that anything is possible. If something that you're hearing inspires you in any kind of way, say, okay, wait, what else is possible? Go into that, dive deep into that, and you will be amazed how much your life changes. <sighs> Sometimes you just gotta sit and be still.